It is indeed an honor to have been the one selected to deliver the valedictory address. I am extremely appreciative of this prestigious opportunity to speak on behalf of the graduating class of 2014, a group of full-fledged adults who are ready to make a resounding and meaningful difference in the world. In 2012, the majority of us came to this institution filled with nostalgia for our former secondary schools. It was a learning experience where one had to be like Abraham, being commanded to leave everything behind and go to the promised land. <laughs> being new to this school, it was quite a task for many of us to find our way to the correct classrooms during our first few days. However, some others found it way more difficult, as some of us, during our two-year tenure, never made it to a single tutorial. <laughs> Having settled in, it didn't take long for us to unite with our new tutors and adopt our new school. With enthusiasm, we all soon lunged forward into making new friends and acquaintances, and some of you may have even met your future life partners. Whereas, whereas others may have failed miserably in their rolling endeavors, being greeted with a, how is Mia, or um, hey boy, just so. During my tenure at this prestigious institution, the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, one critical observation that I made was that this school should no longer adopt Darwin's philosophy of, of survival of the fittest. For it is this philosophy, adhered from the colonial era, which breeds social ills such as poverty, crime, depression, prostitution, drug addiction, and broken homes. A more commendable approach I would advocate is, I am my brother's keeper. This would ensure that everyone must reach his destiny. Consequently, the local and international communities would regain productivity, efficiency, and effectiveness. The onus is therefore on our tutors at this tertiary institution to tap into the learning styles of individual students in order to bring out the best in them, not just the good. If students have the educational cap capacity to be enrolled at such institutions, ideally, they ought to live with satisfactory means of success. Fortunately, wherever a lecturer may have fallen short, our classmates were there to fill in the gaps. I am sure all of you can recall those interactive exam sessions where the student in front of you so willingly supplied you with that answer you didn't know. <laughs> or that homework assignment you forgot to do that the classmates consultation helps you to complete the morning before class. <laughs> Hence, you should also remember the zeros that came with the copying. <laughs> Speaking of zeros that came with copying, who could forget the copying done at Repro? I am sure that all the money that each of us spent at Repro in our two or three years would be able to pay for a gown for everyone seated here today. <laughs> Our parents, whether old or young, abled or differently abled, are making the greatest effort to source funds for our education, and therefore they need to be appreci appreciated with that satisfactory results. Consequently, it is incumbent upon this prestigious institution to totally disregard the, philo the philosophy of survival of the fittest, but rather to adopt the philosophy of no child left behind. A difficult task, I know, but the fruits of your labor will speak for themselves. Now, my fellow colleagues, my advice to you is, let wisdom be your armor and perseverance be your guide. Don't expect to be complacent and think your brother will be your keeper. Though they may have been delicious, the sugar cane and coconut water down the road did not have to come before your schoolwork. Remember, hard work always pays off. 
According to the legendary Bob Marley, you need to stand up for your rights. <laughs> the United Nations Constitution emphasizes our right for education, but we must accept the responsibility that accompanies this right. We should not squander the time, resources, and opportunities awarded to us. I know some of us may have said things like, I know why doing them all hard subjects, because when I leave school, I have no use for them. But that should not be the case. Myself, for example, when it comes to, to schoolwork, I don't see any good or bad subjects. See, I don't got no type. Good grades is the only thing that I like. This world offers nothing productive for loiterers and laziness other than drug addiction and criminality. Some of us may have used the past few years with extreme efficiency, demonstrating diligence, perseverance, and spending late hours in order to progress. I know several of us delved deep into the extra extracurricular activities offered here. Some of us were avid sportsmen, arts club members, some experimented with their physics skills, attempting to figure out just how close a 25 cent piece could land to a wall at just the right trajectory. <laughs> while, while others sought after the herbal and pharmaceutical remedies offered near Sir Arthur's monument. How, however, some of us may have wasted a lot of time thus squandering hard earnings and efforts bestowed upon us by loved ones. But do not forget that every gray cloud has a silver lining. We must never give up. Let us allow our regrets, shortcomings, and weaknesses to spur us on to soar into the heavens rather than to plunge us into the failures of life. We will use our most bitter experiences as motivation to spur us to resilience. The writer Scott Young concurs that any weakness experienced in life can be transformed into a personal strength. We need to realize that we have to be independent individuals ready to face a world full of challenges of extreme magnitudes. However, none of these adversities will ever be too great to conquer as the Father gives the most difficult tasks to his strongest disciples. Colleagues, it is time to wake up and unleash the hidden skills lying dormant within us. Adorn ourselves with hopes, dreams, and aspirations, and with courage and determination, set our goal to reach the summit. I'm sure all of you will agree when I say, I don't want to be mediocre. This is why I shall never forget the motto of my alma mater, Samum Atingito Nintendo. The top is reached by striving. Today, as we bid farewell to Sir Arthur, we reminisce on the good old days within our two or three year span. Our many social gatherings will always be remembered. Meeting up with our peers in our usual cool out spots like Uptown, Patio, the bleachers on the court, the pepper, and the various kiosks in our spare time will be greatly missed. Hence, it is with deep regret that we say farewell. On behalf of the graduating class of 2014, I would like to take this opportunity to first thank our Heavenly Father for making all our endeavors possible. If anyone has not invested in his provision for you, start now and experience the joy his marvelous blessings can bring. Thank you to our diligent and tolerant tutors, deans, and principal. I am sure that you can reach into your hearts to forgive us for the many times we disobeyed school rules and acted immaturely. But seeing how you will all miss us so, so much, feel free to invite us back for next year's water fight. Thank you to Mr. Day, a.k.a. Ibu, <laughs> and the rest of the tactical security team for the daily efforts in ensuring that all the railings around the school are kept safe. 
Last but not least, heartfelt thanks to family members who were so instrumental in assisting us in obtaining our many successes. My father, my mother, my sister, and all my other relatives, thank you very much. Though it seemed that your words landed on deaf ears sometimes, your constant warnings and advice will one day yield fruit in our lives. To the many other caregivers, I express my sincere gratitude. Finally, colleagues, as we bid our last farewell, may we grow closer as we venture into our various fields of work and other endeavors. Remember to always reach out and help your brothers and sisters, as, as you should be good to people on your way up, because you just might need the help on your way down. Though we may no longer bask in the sea of green, beige, brown, black and white, gray, light blue, and navy blue, it is this kaleidoscope of color in its dispersion that will emanate into a rainbow of hope for the future of St. Lucia. <laughs> Gauging by the vast number of intellects seated here before us, what a brilliant and spectacular cabinet of ministers we will have for the year 2024. <laughs> Minister of Finance, Romel Hippolyte. <laughs> Minister of Commerce, Eric Farrell. Minister of Natural Resource Management, Kevin Louis, aka Lube. Minister of Creative Industries, Junior Stunning Frederick. Minister of Innovation and IT, Chavez Marriott Joseph. Minister of Agriculture, Hassan Rambali. But he will have no chance if Clint Ferdinand decides to run. <laughs> Minister of Education, Ms. Josette Albert. Minister, Minister of Tourism, Caitlin Shawry, a.k.a. Ray Stay Dope. Principal of Safa Lewis, Suel and August. And last but not least, our Minister of International Affairs and National Security, Mr. Day, a.k.a. Ibu. <laughs> Let us enjoy the frivolities of life in full measure, for we are young and full of life. But we must act with responsibility, maturity, and integrity. Where jobs are not readily available, we will create for ourselves. If an opportunity comes our way, we will leap towards it. When adversities confront us, remember, God is only a prayer away. Let's always, lift our, let's always keep our heads lifted high in dignity and integrity as we go forth and change the world. Bon chance de tout est fort futur. Buena suerte in todos los futuros esfuerzos. Good luck in all your future endeavors. Merci, gracias. Thank you.